Hey everyone, welcome to this week's slightly late uh, Azure update. It was the 4th of July in America, so Microsoft didn't post the updates till late Friday night. So I had to quickly create this Saturday morning. So there we go. Not many updates this week at all. I do have them. Just you can jump to the particular one you care about the most. New videos this week. So I updated my study cram for AI 900. So there have been some changes. Now this is a non-generative portion because I have a separate study cram for the generative pieces. So this goes with the generative video to cover the complete AI 900 if you want to get that AI uh, foundational certification. And they're not technical at all, but if you wanted to see me uh, running away or trying to hide from a chicken, uh, I was feeding my neighbors chickens. They've got a pretty aggressive rooster. Uh, so there's a short of the rooster trying to get me. So enjoy. Okay, so on to what's new on the database side. So three announcements all around Azure Databricks and the ability to use serverless compute. Now what this means is I no longer have to worry about the deployment and the configuration of the infrastructure required for these particular workloads. So specifically now for the Delta Live tables, the DLT, so those streaming data pipelines, I can just use that serverless compute capability. For the notebooks, there's a base configuration I set, but now again, it's gonna use that serverless capability. I don't have to worry about any underlying infrastructure. And then the jobs themselves. Those jobs will execute on that serverless compute offering. Um, so think about your data processing, my analysis pipelines, all will just ex execute on that serverless. And because it's serverless, any kind of optimization, any scaling will just be performed for you. And then miscellaneous, so for Teams, one of the big phishing attack vectors is people go and spin up a trial tenant. So it has some name dot on Microsoft.com. And so to the average user, they see support or whatever it is dot on Microsoft.com. They think, oh, it's an official channel and they can be tricked to do things. And so what's gonna happen in July 29th of 2024, by default, those temporary Teams trial tenants will be blocked. Now as an organization, I could go and enable those federations if I wanted to, but they're gonna be blocked by default because most of them are not gonna be legitimate sources trying to talk to your users. So they're making this change to try and help you protect from that attack vector. The Entra Internet Access and Private Access solutions as part of that Secure Services Edge are now GA. Now I've done videos on both of these. The Internet Access, hey, from my machine, no matter what it is via that Global Secure Access client, will establish connectivity to the Entra Edge where conditional access is applied, policies are applied to the sites I should or shouldn't visit based on name, based on categories. It helps protect from some trickery where I connect to some Wi-Fi and there's some bad actor on it. So that is now GA and private access. I want to talk TCP, UDP to some resource on my network. I don't have to do that traditional just VPN. Once again, it's going to go to the Entra edge. Once again, conditional access gets applied and then I get that constantly being verified connectivity um, through those. So those are both GA. They are separate licenses. I think there is a new suite so we can go and check that out for the exact pricing. For Windows 365, there's now cross-region DR in GA. Now, this is an additional add-on license for Windows 365 Enterprise only. It's not available for any of the other Windows 365 SKUs. And so it gives you that protection from a regional outage. If you activate, it will create a geographically distant copy of the cloud PC that will be based on the last restore point for that cloud PC. Now, because it's a restore point, it will have all the applications, all the user settings, any data that's part of that particular cloud PC. Um, there's a certain recovery point and time objective that is available as part of that. I mean, I think you're talking hours uh, as part of this. But now, hey, in that backup region, I'd be able to get back access to my Windows 365 machine. And also for Windows 365, in preview is the new Teams architecture. So this is a new client side plugin. One of the things with Teams, obviously I have that video, I have the voice, the multimedia, 
Well, if I'm on a remote machine and I'm sitting here, so I have a connection to the remote machine, those video, those voice, those multimedia, if it was bouncing via the cloud all of the time, I'll get a latency. And so they do special types of redirection and bypass, so it talks directly to the client. So there's a new client plugin that establishes that virtual channel for Teams, which handles those media engine downloads. And so all of the particular updates can be automatically upgraded as there's changes. Um, the plugin handles everything. So this will improve the performance for advanced meeting capabilities, telephony, voice, media bypass, and all of those features where there's some uh, media aspect to it. And that was it. I told you it was quick this week. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Until next video, take care.